A long time ago, Joey Taylor got an idea. He wanted to build a guitar made from something from every province and territory in Canada to celebrate the country he loved. And he did it. It took 11 years to build with more than 60 pieces of material, everything from parts of Wayne Gretzky's and Paul Henderson's hockey sticks to seats in Massey Hall and the old Montreal Forum to Nickel in Sudbury. The guitar is now 10 years old. So we thought we'd have Joey Taylor back to check in on developments. It's so good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me and back. And your beast back and here the beast in the is studio. back, yes. <laughs> how, how is the guitar doing? Uh, it's doing pretty well. I mean, as an instrument, it's doing great. Uh, you know, it uh, meets people and it sounds wonderful. It's interesting to talk to musicians who have played it more than once over those years because they get this perspective. I'm not a musician, so I, I can't really tell, but they will tell me, oh, this has really opened up. It's warming up here. This is uh, fantastic. So it's doing well as an instrument for sure. And it has stayed intact? No, no part of it has fallen apart or anything like that? No, there's a couple little uh, cracks emerging, but those are natural. Uh, there was one catastrophic failure in Muskoka, actually, uh, when the bridge split, uh, but that was repaired. It's better than ever. And I've made some modifications, some uh, some additions to the to the case and straps inside. That was going to be my next question. Since yeah. you were here, like, because you were here, I don't forget now, five, five tw six, uh, seven years ago, something like that. Not that long, but a few, three or four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you've added some stuff to the guitar since then? Not to the guitar, but to the case and to the, the strap. Yeah. Such a, yeah. well, pick up the strap, well, show us. Well, uh, in fact, I'll show you. Um, you might remember this story about Miles Newts from Chatham, Ontario. He was the, the kid who was hung on a a hook in, in, in the bathroom at his school and, and, and died shortly thereafter, a couple days afterwards. His, this is a hat that he liked to wear and his parents gave me that. Mm -hmm. uh, and since I do a lot of presentations in schools, uh, it gives me a chance to talk about the anti-bullying programs that are in, in various schools. Um, it's very heavy. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, we already had this. One of the original pieces, of course, was the shoulder tile and cap badge from the uh, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, mm -hmm. founded in 1914. Uh, but I also added from the, uh, the shoulder tile and cap badge from the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, founded in 1795. Oh, my goodness. I know. <laughs> uh, and then this is the, the really uh, interesting new piece. So this is a little bit of Jersey. We're not quite sure of the year. Uh, sort of mid-1930s, late-1930s perhaps, from the Vancouver Asahi. That was the uh, Japanese-Canadian baseball team founded in 1914. Okay. Not allowed to play against white teams, but pretty soon by the 1930s became the hot ticket in baseball in Vancouver because of their unique style of baseball called brain ball. Mm. And uh, then, of course, the whole team fell apart when the Japanese were interred in the camps, uh, interned in the camps across... Uh, Across the country after World War II, yeah, yeah. during World War II, during yeah. World War II, so, yeah. so uh, we we did a great uh, mm -hmm. debut of this uh, contribution from the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center uh, down at uh, the Rogers Center uh, in 2014. Boy, the guitar tells so many stories, doesn't it? It really does. Indeed, yeah. Uh, one of the stories that I loved that you told last time when you were here had to do with somebody whom you approached because you wanted to get a little piece of a former prime minister's paddle. Right. as part of the guitar. That's right. Let's just play that snippet of tape and then we'll talk after <laughs> okay. that. Sheldon, if you would, roll it. In my CBC days, uh, I happened to bump into Justin Trudeau in the hall one day. I said, hey, uh, here's who I am, here's what I'm trying to do. And he said, oh man, I don't think I've got anything left. I think it's, I think it's all at the Canoe Museum. But I'll keep my eyes peeled for you. And a while later, I got this uh, phone call from Justin saying my brother and I had a look around uh, and we found one of Dad's favorite paddles. And where is part of Pierre Elliott Trudeau's paddle in this guitar? It's the tone bar just inside the top of the sound hole here. Uh, and amazingly, like, you know, I take this guitar across the country on invitation, of course. And uh, uh, th that's one of the pieces that a lot of people want to touch. Like, mm. e even in the oil patch. <laughs> like, really? It's like, you know, can, well, mostly women, I have to confess. <laughs> At that point, there's some uh -huh. mojo going on there. But yeah, it's this very popular touchstone for people uh, that they, they want to touch it. I, I got it into Justin's hands before he was in politics. We met at a pen benefit at the Chateau Laurier in Ottawa, and he was like, oh man, there's a guitar here. And I got a terrible, terrible picture on an old pre iPhone, you know, that looks terrible. Uh, and I'm trying to engage the new government uh, to try and get something going. Uh, no success yet, but uh, I'm hoping to get it back in his hands. For when a when you first gave it to him, he was not even an elected MP. He was, no, no, he was no. not he in was politics a teacher, at that point. I think. He was a teacher. Yeah. Did you see 
Did you see what's happened happening? No. And, and you know, they made, like, such a nice guy, right? We, we did, we shot some video with him in Mont Royal Park uh, when we were sort of getting the project together. He says, yeah, I'll meet you at the park. And, you know, he drove there separately. We drove and we found a spot to do this little shoot. And uh, what a super, super generous, delightful guy. And uh, didn't and seem like he had any interest, quite honestly. And now he's your prime minister. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Is the guitar constantly visiting somebody? Well, you know, I, this is the problem. It spends way too much time, uh, you know, at my place. And I, I wish that I was constantly visiting people because I love every moment of it. And uh, it's a, this weird feeling where I go out and I, I get invited to go give presentations, like the one that you saw in Muskoka a few <laughs> years back. And I do schools and I do community events and I do corporate events and I do festivals and, uh, uh, and so on, and uh, conferences. And when I do this presentation, the feedback I get is extraordinary. Like, there's no doubt that I've done something that people care about and it's I've a done huge the right turn thing. On. The whole thing is a turn on. People it's great. hug me and cry, and it's mm -hmm. just, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's a hard sell. And uh, so. Uh, What's a hard sell? Well, imagine, if you will, you're a, you're a conference planner, and you call my agency and you say, I'm, I'm interested here, we're doing something about uh, Canada, and what, what have you got on your roster? And they say, Well, you'd be interested in Joey Taylor and the Six String Nation project. Uh, what's that? And they say, well, it's a guitar. It's made of Wayne Gretzky's hockey stick and whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they say, oh, we're not really a music thing. Hmm. So maybe if you have an Olympic athlete, that would be great. <laughs> and so I, I, I miss those opportunities, I think, because people don't recognize it. it's actually about them. This mm -hmm. is not a finished object that's made from some iconic pieces. Mm. It's made, the most important parts of this guitar are Joe LeBobe's oyster shucking knife from Lennox Island PEI, and the Duke of grain elevator, and John Ware's cabin. You know, there's stories all across the country. It's Canadiana. It's, and it, and it's, it's about those communities, about those stories. It's sort of rich with, with story as a blank slate. And uh, that's the part I think that people miss. Have you got a guess as to how many people have held that guitar during the course of its decade? Uh, it's probably in the realm of 20, Thousand, thirty thousands at this point. And yeah. has it visited every province and territory? Every province and territory of Canada. It yeah. Has. There's still lots of places that I'm anxious to get to, but but we've certainly touched down in each province and territory and done something. Why don't you let it uh, rest for a second? Yeah, here, because indeed. we're now going to bring up uh, some pictures of some of the people who have held sure. your six string nation extravaganza there. Uh, Sheldon, let's bring this up. Here oh, we go. Yeah. All right, there's our Lieutenant Governor. Oh, what a delight. Does she play it? No, but you know it was so great. This was at the uh, this was at the National Aboriginal Day event at the Carlu, uh, the Prince's Charities uh, Birch Hill Capital uh, uh, Equity Partners event, and she, she just came striding up to me and said, "Hi, I'm Lizzie." <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm and Lizzie, I like, and I'm like, <laughs> "Wow, wow, what a pleasure!" I'm I'm Joey, and and uh, so we did these series of portraits, some with her on her own. Uh, I don't know if you have those as well, but uh, just. Beautiful. Doug Nicholson's my photographer, and uh, he does such a great job. That's Elizabeth Dowdswell, yeah. our lieutenant governor. Oh, here's a guy who's no longer in town. I know, but oh, he's uh, doing well, isn't what he? What a crowd favorite he was. Yeah, That's, I, I mean, think he was the Kawasaki. glue. I think he was the glue that kept that dressing room together in some ways. Uh, so when we added that piece from the uh, Vancouver Asahi, uh, we did this big event uh, for Canada Baseball Day, which happens in August, where they celebrate Canadian baseball history. And uh, so this was a pregame show. And uh, they did a big presentation on the Jumbotron and uh, uh, had me out. And then Munanori Kawasaki came out, who was aware of the Vancouver Asahi. There was, there was a feature film made in Japan last year or the year before about the team. So he was certainly aware of their story. He came out and hemmed it up, and he was fantastic. It's amazing that for a utility infielder who can't hit that well and, and you know, pretty good defense, yeah. he's a huge, huge fan favorite. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously loves, uh, loves to ham it up with the guitar. That's right. He's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, okay, Sheldon, guy. let's get to the next picture here. Here's Joseph Boyden. What's the story yeah. behind this one? Oh, he plays it backwards like Paul McCartney. Yeah, this Look was that. also at the, uh, that's right, this was also at the National Aboriginal Day event at the Carlu. Um, and uh, it's, it's so, I mean, I, I had just finished reading uh, um, his, uh, his first novel, I guess it was at the time. Hmm. And uh, what a delightful guy. And our great harmonica player as well. So he, we, we have some portraits that we did with him and the harmonica at the same time. 
This next picture is not too bad, Joey. You look like you're having a pretty good day there. Yeah. That what are you was, doing uh, with our governor general? Uh, well, uh, right out of the blue, and I, th I thought it was uh, some sort of uh, ruse, but uh, no, it was the actual governor general's office calling to say that I've been awarded the Meritorious Service Medal for this project. Fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, and they treat the thing is they treat you so great, right? You, you get there uh, up to Ottawa, and and, and they, you you feel like a million bucks, and they treat you like a million bucks. And you get in there, and there's the ceremony, and then there's a reception afterwards in that gorgeous tent room. And uh, that's where, so Jean Chrétien's son uh, was also getting a, a medal for his work with, uh, with uh, disability, uh, working with people with disabilities, taking them scuba diving. Okay. Okay. So he was getting a medal for that, and uh, Jean Chrétien was there. And at one point, he's just standing by himself, and uh, you know, I just went up and started chatting to him, and he looks amazing. Like, he's 80 years old. He's 80 years old. Yeah. He's in super great shape, yeah. uh, tall, very robust. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of wanted to ask him to put me in a chokehold, you know, just <laughs> come on, please. <laughs> but I figured he gets that all the time. So we just, uh, I said, uh, I said, you know, I kind of miss having you around. And he said, well, I don't miss being there. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first time at Rideau Hall? That was my first time at Rideau Hall, yeah. It's yeah. pretty special. Pretty isn't special. It? Really, really special. Now, the, the, the dark side of it, the downside of it, mm -hmm. I should say, is, is just that I realized coming out of there that I, I'm, I'm one of a long line of Canadian artists who goes up full of pride and, and, uh, to, to Redo Hall and gets a, a, some sort of recognition and then comes back to, you know, the phone, Reality. The phone not ringing mm -hmm. and, and the bills piling up. It's a, it's a kind of a weird situation in this country. The, the way that artists are, are, are viewed by the general economy. It's a kind of such a small part. And it's a, it's a weird road to hoe. But it's, mm. it's, it was certainly a proud moment to be there and, and to be recognized for the project. Let, let's go down that path a little bit. What, mm. what, um, what should we do about that? The fact that there are lots of people who are making contributions in the arts and cultural world, and many of them, not making a living. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some, certainly there's some tax, uh, you know, we could take a cue from some other countries around the world. They recognize that the life of an artist is different, mm -hmm. you, that you are, um, uh, you're kind of gig to gig rather than some sort of steady income. So as it is, you kind of get a, a few gigs in a row and CRA decides that's how much money you make every month. And it's like, nope, that's all I'm making all year. The, the other part of it, though, I think, is that in a way we're not a natural art market because we are too big uh, with too few people. And, and getting across, covering that distance as an artist, I mean, that's why we have the Canada Council and other, mm -hmm. is really to knit the, the distances together. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, in order to build an audience and make that connection that every artist needs, whether you're a songwriter or an author or whatever, uh, you kind of have to get out there and, and develop your audience. Uh, and that's a hard thing to do when, when the cost of traveling, yes. there's not that many places in between uh, that, that where you can make a living. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I'm thrilled. I'm so excited that I, you know, I get a call, for instance, from a little community called Bashaw, Alberta, which is actually in the news just recently. But uh, they called me up and said, we would love to have you come and speak to our community. And I said, well, listen, I would love to come, but it's going to cost you, you know, a lot because you got to get me out there and you know, I'm not sure. And they were like, mm, yeah, no, that's not really going to work. I said, well, I'll tell you what, next time I'm going to be in Edmonton, uh, let me, I'll give you some advance notice and, and we'll see if we can work something out. And that worked brilliantly. And oh, we did great. such a, two wonderful events in Bashaw because somebody else had paid for me to come to, to Edmonton. Hmm. And I would gladly do that all the time. You know, I'm hoping, I had been hoping by the end of 2017 to get to 150 schools across the country. For the 150 years the, the country has been yeah, around. Yeah, and, and the school presentations that I do, and they're sort of for grade five and up, mm -hmm. uh, but I do a lot of high schools, mostly high schools and middle schools. And they're super successful and they're really great. And it's something I would love to do, you know, anywhere mm -hmm. I was asked. I would gladly do it. Uh, and I've been trying to drum up support for a project like that. And again, it's a, it's a tough sell. I'm not sure anyone mm -hmm. understands quite what it is that I'm hoping to do. But that's, I mean, that's, that would be the dream for me, for, for 150, would be to get out there. I do want to talk more about your Canada 150 plans, and mm -hmm. we will. One of the funny things I've always found about you as an artist is that in spite of the fact that you have put your blood, sweat, toil, tears, guts, everything into this thing, you don't actually play it. Yeah. I, th I find that <laughs> hilarious. 
Unless it's Bo Diddley, I, I, can, I can do that. <laughs> but the last time you were here, yeah. we did manage to, I think, scare up some kid off the street <laughs> and get him to come in. And just so everybody knows, the thing does play. Yeah. And here's what it sounds like, okay? Sheldon, you wanna roll this? Very nice. Mm, yeah. It really does sound beautiful. Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> Our love is here to stay. Lovely song. The last time you were here, you did talk about the potential of finding a permanent home for this, right. like in a Hall of Fame or something. I think you talked about a, a music center in Calgary. What's yeah. happening with that? Well, you know, we've been involved, uh, I've been involved for several years in a conversation with the National Music Center, actually even back when it was the Cantos Music Foundation in Calgary, which uh, the thing that's so great about them, they have this amazing collection of instruments. Uh, they have the, the piano that Elton John wrote uh, Tumbleweed on. They have uh, uh, sack butts uh, made by uh, Eula Kane and, and early ARP synthesizers and all this wonderful collection of instruments. And they recognize, unlike some other institutions, that an instrument is worthless if it's not being played, that that's its purpose, that's what it does, and in a, in a way that's what keeps it alive, is, is it being played. So they have a really positive way of doing that, uh, and we were involved in some pretty deep conversations about eventually ha having this wind up there. Uh, but then, of course, they got involved in a capital campaign and rebranding themselves as the National Music Center, and in fact, they've just opened huh. and a fantastic okay. facility. Uh, in the old King Edward Hotel site, uh, King Eddie Hotel site in, in Calgary. Uh, it's an amazing facility with studios and CKUA Radio has moved in there okay. and it's, it's so just you're great. So you going to revisit the Well, I, I hope to, to restart yeah. that conversation with them. I think it would be a fitting place for it to, uh, to wind up. Okay, speaking of winding up, let's wind up our conversation right. with this. Obviously, 150th anniversary of the country next year. You've talked about the fact you'd love to go to 150 schools. What, what else you got in mind? I mean, we, you, we really got to get that thing out there in, in this big anniversary year of our country. Eh? Well, here's, here's another plan that, I, that I'd that i like to hatch, but I need some help doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just had a, I mean, Don, you know, Don Ross wrote a beautiful piece of music for this guitar uh, and on this guitar. Uh, David Leesk, uh, a songwriter from Mississauga, uh, just borrowed this guitar for a couple weeks and he wrote two songs including one about Joe LeBeau, the Oyster Shucker, hmm. the fantastic song, The Legend of Joe LeBeau. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be great to have uh, writers uh, up and coming and established in every genre, from every cultural background in communities all across the country, write a song about the, the piece that they connect to. Hmm. So Lindy Vopenfjord, I want to do, uh, him to do Gimli, Manitoba, home of the largest Icelandic population outside of Iceland, which is recognized uh, in there, and I, I'd love I to do uh, one of the pieces that he's he's been interested in the John Ware piece. But imagine being able to put together an album. There's now like 70, 72 pieces, including all the pieces on the case and the strap, 72 songs uh, that are by that are in the voice of the people from those communities who are connect to those stories and to share those in music. There's an album uh, there somewhere, you would think. There's a few volumes. There's a bunch of albums there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a whole project there, and I, you know, I'm, I've tried reaching out, and I, I've, I haven't got much traction. That's... Uh, you tried reaching yeah. out to who? Like Canada Council and this type of thing? Yeah, Canada Council. So there's a, there's a program at Canada Council called the New Chapter uh, that's dedicated to the 150 stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, what they said to me was, well, yeah, that sounds awfully good, but you'd need to also then organize a tour so that everyone could, could see it. It's like, well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I have what I do, but mm -hmm. organizing tours isn't one of those things. Yeah. I'm not a, you know. So in a way, it's, it's one of the problems, again, with being an artist, because the, everyone has the tools to say, well, you can be your own accountant and your own web designer and mm -hmm. your own everything. Mm -hmm. We are. Everyone tries to do that, and you can't do everything well right. uh, as much as I try. Somehow, we've got to find some synergy or some collection of people who, you know, just want to hop on this idea and make it happen. Yeah. How do we do that? I don't, I, do we go on TV and have an interview about Maybe. it? Maybe. <laughs> that, might, that might help. That might help. Okay. Good. That could be one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I can't thank you enough for coming back in and giving us an update on I the Six Dream Nation project. for having me back. It's wonderful, and the guitar looks in great shape. And we wish it a happy 10th birthday as we wish the country a happy 150th and hope 
somehow those two things yeah. get together. Thank you. And you'll, you'll learn to play for next time, right? Joey, I don't know how to play that. I can't play <laughs> one note on that thing. <laughs> Teddy wasn't bad, though. <laughs> That's right. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.